Hi everyone, welcome to Cloud Mid Easy. And uh, since I posted my last video about AZ900 Microsoft Azure free certification, I seen lot of uh, responses and people are really interested to take the certification. So uh, I since I have taken this certification just 15 days back, I just thought why not to post another video to help the candidate out because I have recently taken the exam and I can recollect few of the questions that I got and i have searched over internet i got exactly the same question so i have documented those questions and answer whatever the uh, questions and available answer are over internet and uh, in this video i'll be touching those along with that i'll be just touching few of the most important uh, topic that you need to cover to pass easy 900 and down the description below of the video i'll post one pdf that will having around 35 questions that I can recall uh, out of 43 questions whatever I got and then uh, you can see those questions as well okay so let's begin so um, uh, the few key points uh, that you need to remember before going to the exam is uh, IS, PIAS and SAS so infrastructure as a service uh, that is like you know cloud based service where uh, Azure will be giving you the virtual machine and storage and they do not have any responsibility after that they will be just working on the secu physical security and they will be giving you a SLA that it should be a, a proper uptime should be there but after that everything every sort of thing like patching uh, virtual security networking you have to manage so that basically service called infrastructures as a service then platform as a service is uh, uh, hardware along with the software as you will provide so the example is azure function logical app most of database any rdbms provided by azure so that most of the services that are provided by azure are uh, platform as a service and then it comes to software as a service software as a service is uh, the customer will not have access to the hardware just uh, the customer can configure the software and it is available normally over internet so microsoft uh, 365 microsoft teams these are few example of software as a service so if i go to this uh, diagram so you can see in on premises customer needs to manage everything so from networking storage physical security whatever is there he needs to manage the on-premises but the infrastructure as a service if, if we take that one so from uh, OS to application layer this will be managed by the customer rest all like virtualization server storage networking physical security is, is managed by the uh, cloud operator maybe Azure when this uh, this is basically called a shared responsibility module model where Azure will be responsible for some of his uh, part and uh, being a customer we need to responsible for some of our task so that is infrastructure service and platform service is a customer just needs to manage application and data rest all will be managed by azure and the software as a service is everything will be uh, managed by the azure and then uh, the customer will not have access to any of the lower level component like server and all but the customer can configure the software so this uh, fourth diagram you need to memorize it because you will get a lot of questions from infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service okay so i'll jump into the next topic next topic is public private and hybrid cloud public cloud is uh, the cloud that we are using i mean it's azure and aws gcp whatever cloud that is available over internet so that is public cloud and private cloud is specific to organization uh, few of the organization uh, like you know secret organization or government organization they need cloud that will be run over internet not over internet uh, that is called private cloud uh, just one quick information aws does provide the service of private cloud as well so that is one uh, exam question and then hybrid cloud is a mix of public cloud and on-premises infrastructure this is one of the common question that will be asked during exam 
because uh, this is like you know we have nowadays we have on premises server we are migrating our our infrastructure to azure cloud so it could be mixed uh, of like public cloud as well as on premises and that specific cloud is called hybrid cloud okay so moving to the next slide is capex and opex this is most most important question you must get in the exam is uh, capex for capital expenditure it's like upfront money that we need to pay and the the common example of uh, capex is on on premises data center so on, on premises data center you need to pay upfront uh, for at least 2 3 years right uh, but for uh, operational expenditure opex is uh, like uh, cloud service where based on your uses we need to pay so that is called pay as you go model so this is these two differences will be asked in the exam now i'll be quickly going to the azure government azure government also important topic in azure government we need to uh, look out for azure us that is specific for us and federal us federal agencies and there's azure china um, the cloud is prepared by microsoft but this is uh, not operated by microsoft this is this one of the agency uh, they are operating microsoft uh, azure china and then azure germany this is this cloud is specific for azure germany but this can be used if like azure germany permits from other part of the world as well okay so the next slide i mean the slides are done from my side now i'll be quickly uh, go through few questions that i can recall and rest of the for rest of the question you can you can download the pdf that that will be attached to the description below okay so the first question is what are the two characteristic of public cloud each character answer presents a complete solution so uh, it's dedicated hardware that is not the case normally we get the shared hardware in public cloud or in azure unsecured connection that is not not the case cloud is always secured limited storage that is also not the case cloud provide unlimited storage blob storage if we consider in azure so these three options are not correct they are metered pricing yeah we can have control over our uh, pricing so that is the correct answer and self service management here yeah, we can manage uh, cloud service by our own so this two would be the right answer we'll go to the next slide you have an on premises network that contains thousands of servers you need to recommend a solution that provides additional resources uh, to your users okay so they have thousands servers they want few additional resources to the users the solution must must minimize the capital and operational expenditure cost what should be what should you include in the recommendation so they are saying that complete migration to public to uh, to public cloud so they have uh, on premise thousand servers going all to the public cloud would be very much expensive so the upfront cost anyway it will be very very high so we will not go to the go to this option then next add some additional data center i mean when there is no need to add some data center then go for private private cloud i mean they have on premises network already present so going to private cloud is not a good option then the hybrid cloud add keep some keep the thousand existing server add few services cloud services to make it compliant so that that, that would be the most feasible option uh, in terms of expenditure right so i'll choose this option now i'll go to slide 3 in slide 3 uh, to which cloud model can you deploy the physical server okay so private cloud and hybrid cloud yeah private cloud you can deploy physical servers hybrid cloud you can also deploy physical servers in hybrid cloud because hybrid cloud is a on premises server plus uh, public cloud so this option is correct but i will uh, cross check the other options as well uh, private cloud only this is not the case private cloud hybrid cloud and public cloud so this is not the case because public cloud we can't uh, deploy physical servers 
I mean, this is this server deployment is not in our control. It is control in uh, with the Azure only and hybrid cloud only. This option is also not the correct one. So private and hybrid cloud, we can deploy our physical server. This is the correct one. Now next slide. Uh, you plan to store 20 TB of data in Azure. The data will be accessed infrequently and virtualized, uh, visualized by the Microsoft Power BI. You need to recommend a storage solution for data. Which two solution uh, should you recommend it? So uh, we need to uh, choose between two. So the uh, that data lake is one of the option for data visualization. Azure Data Lake. So this is the correct option. Then Cosmos DB will no will, will not go with the Cosmos DB because it's a no SQL for Azure. Then Azure SQL Data Warehouse. as your sql database and postgre postgre will will not go with the postgre sql uh, so with data lake uh, we can choose azure sql database so these two options would be uh, fine i think but here they are uh, talking about 20 tb of data so rather i will go with uh, Azure Data Warehouse and Data Lake. So we'll not go with the SQL database. Okay. So let me remove that option. And then question five is uh, you need to identify the type of failure which an Azure availability zone can you use to protect the access of Azure service. What should you identify so they are telling you need to identify the type of failure for which an azure availability zone can be used to protect access at azure service so i mean it's uh, physical ser server failure region failure storage failure azure data center failure so they are talking about uh, the av availability zone failure so it must be the entire data center failure so this is the correct option Okay, so that five question I discussed, but for rest all, please download uh, the PDF that is there and please do subscribe my channel so that I can put these types of content which will help you to clear your certification, clear your doubts in cloud. Thank you very much.